Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner. This is stage seven of UAE Tour. Now, as we've seen throughout all the first six stages, Quick Step, Pseudo Quick Step, that is, have looked fantastic. They won stage one with Tim Miller. They won yesterday's stage six with Tim Miller. They won the individual time trial on stage two. And on stage three, the first summit finish, Remco Evnepoel lit everybody up for the sprint finish for second place on that stage. Now remember, that was the first mountain stage here at the UAE Tour. I talked about it yesterday on the Butterfly Effect. And that climb is a bit different than the climb we're going to experience here on stage seven of the UAE Tour. Jabel Hafit is seven is seven percent sections on the climb, but the whole climb itself at about 10 and a half kilometers long is going to average 6.5 percent. So when we compare it with that stage three where that climb was about 4.5 and 5 percent pitches, now we're getting into a real climb. Okay, stage three was a 20 kilometer climb up to the top. So sometimes you could be sitting there on the Chesterfield thinking, Chris, it's double the climb on stage three. But I'm telling you, as I always have, you have to be over 6% to be really considered a climb that only the climbers are going to excel on. And when we're looking at Jabal Hafid, this is getting into that, that zone at 6.5% where it's pure climbers. Now, pure climbers, certainly you got to consider Remco Evnepoel because he won the Vuelta España, did amazing stuff at the Classic of San Sebastian when he dropped off everybody before the finish and soloed in that 25 40 kilometers into the finish line and of course he won lbl in the springtime in april of last year so he's got to be considered the big time favorite but there's differences that i'll point out at the end of this video between remco Evnepo last year during the vuelta and the classica in spain versus here at the uae tour now the biggest thing to keep in mind when you watch the butterfly effect yesterday was i said you have to get Rimko Evnepoel on the front during this last climb for a significant amount of time if you want to beat the kid. Otherwise, he's going to light you up and eat you for breakfast is more or less what I said. Now, the stage at 155 kilometers, pancake flat until the last 10.5K when we start the final climb. We see that there's five riders up the road. Jacko Hannanen from AG2R is up there. Balasted from Albacene is there. Kano Volovas from FDJ. Michael Hessman from Yumbo Visma, and Sam Wellsford, the sprinter from DSM. They're up there and they got about a five minute lead on the stage to begin with, but about four and a half when the cameras come on. And to my surprise, when you back the camera up and you look at the peloton back there, Enos is pulling, Movistar is pulling, right? UAE Team Emirates, they're up there and Quick Step's up there. So everybody's pulling to bring it in for a finish. Big finish on this last 10.5 kilometers where everything's still available for the win. Now, Movistar pulling, it's the last day of a stage race. So again, everything's up there. But when you look at the GC favorites, when you're talking about their time up there in that group of five, they have one rider up there at five minutes and it's Michael Hessman from Yumbo Visma. So the other team's pulling. I don't really know if you gotta pull because if Remco having to pull once to be able to win today's stage, and not have the thread on the general classification up there from Hessman, they got to do some work. So in my mind, you could possibly sit back on this stage. Now, Remco having the pull and Sudol Quickstep could back off the throttle and give that stage to Hessman, right? But earlier, before the stage even started in the interviews, we want to cover those because Peo Bilbao talked about how he thinks he can move up a spot on the general classification from third up to second. So basically, he thinks he can outclimb Plap. Remco Evnepoel saying, why doesn't he just follow the favorites up the last climb and win the last stage too, along with winning everything else here at the UAE Tour? So there's a lot of different scenarios that the writers were talking about. And one that I want you to focus on in the interview is Remco Evnepoel said, basically, he wants a shot at winning the stage. So you want, they want to win the stage with Sudo Quickstep. They want to, of course, win the general classification with Remco Evnepoel. And there's a five minute gap on the general classification up there to Hessman. So I'm thinking quick step pull the whole time, but these other teams are going to ride the front anyways. So as we come into the final climb with 10.5 kilometers, we're going to see Hessman and he's going to throw down for Yumbo Visma and he's going to split this group of five up instantly. Wellsford, the sprinter from DSM, he's the first to go out the back. Probably shouldn't have been in this break anyways, but he's got salt all over him. And I'm sure he was just out there trying to get some training in a seven-day stage race that was just about to come to the end. 
So up there with, with Hessman, he's going to have some company in the FDJ rider of Kano Volovas, and Volovas is locked onto his wheel. Now, two minutes and 45 seconds, we know these guys are going to get caught. It's just a matter of when and what's going to happen in the back. I told you yesterday, UAE team members were going to be aggressive on today's stage. And when we start into the climb, there they are. UA Team Emirates is on the front. And guess what? Bora Hans go for no reason at all. They're on the front too. I honestly think it was just to pull back Wellsford, the sprinter from DSM, so he didn't beat any of their climbers up to the finish here on Jabba Hafid. And then they'd get laughed at. So with DSM getting pulled back, their sprinter, and all of a sudden that's the last time we're going to see Bora Hans go on the front. Now, we're going to see three guys from Quick Step on the front, and I think this is a no-no, right? I said it yesterday, you want to force Quick Step to be on the front. At this point in time, though, Quick Step, you don't have to be on the front. We know the, M the MO from UAE Team Emirates, right? They want to get on the front. They want to make the race as fast as they possibly can. That's why they had their teammate already on the front before Quick Step, so they can make this race hard because they have Adam Yates, who's a pure climber, and we're going up what I would consider at 6.5% to be a solid climb for 10 kilometers. Now, we'll see the Quick Step guys. Already from the camera angle, from the front view, you can tell these guys are hurting on the front, and they'll blow up pretty quickly hereafter. Then we see UAE Team Emirates get on the front. They got four guys lined up with Mikhail Berg first. When we're looking at Mark Soler second, Brandon McNulty, the American rider, he's sitting third, and Adam Yates is sitting fourth. We see Quick Step right behind there, and those guys look like they're kind of hurting. It's going to take a little bit longer for Remco Evan to pull to get himself in the right position. And as I'm sitting on the couch, I'm wondering, wow, Remco, you should probably get in front of your own teammates because they're looking a little bit beat up right now and about ready to flip that steak over because they're cooked on one side. Now, Mikhail Berg, he's going deep. He's got the whole field strung out. It hasn't blown up yet, but it's all strung out. Just before he finishes his final pull, you'll see him look over his shoulder. He looks straight back down the line because he wants to know if this pace is working. And when he looks back at Adam Yates, Yates gives no kind of nod at all to slow down or speed up. So Mikhail Berg, when he sees all the way over to the left that it's the pseudo quick step rider coming out the back and dropping like a bomb back there, he just gets on the gas for a few hundred meters more as he starts stringing this field out even further. Mikhail Berg will pull off and it's time for Mark Soler, the Solarism, to go to work. Only this time Soler is doing everything perfectly right. And this is what I'm talking about. You tell Mark Soler what to do. He can pedal the bike. There is absolutely no doubt about that. Ride the bike, something different, but he can definitely pedal the bike. And as Mark Soler is getting on there, now we're starting to see the effects from UAE Team Emirates train going in to start this final last climb. As we look back at the peloton, it's starting to blow up back there, and everybody's starting to hurt. We see uh, Remco Evnipul's finally got himself up into the right position there, just behind the UAE train of Adam Yates. And now, all of a sudden, with Mark Soler being done after about 500, 700 meters pulling on the front, it's time for the American Brandon McNulty to go to work. Now, Soler started to destroy the peloton, but now it's time for Brandon McNulty to destroy the favorites. Because when we look at the field there, it's all the favorites lined up, and the peloton is no longer intact. But Brandon McNulty starting his acceleration. And he's blowing up the favorites. We look in the back, and it's the cute, it's the Sadal Quick Step rider Schmid coming out the back, and that is the last helper for Remco Evnepoel is wearing the race leader's red jersey. Along with him, though, he's got company back there. Could guess what? Rubio, the winner of Stage Three Mountain Summit finish, he's coming out the back too, because this is a completely different scenario than what we saw on Stage Three, as the speed has been fast from kilometer zero all the way up to this point in time up this climb. Full gas, Rubio's out the back. And then we'll see Brochard. Brochard is coming out the back for AG2R. But pay attention to him because we're going to see his mug again later up this climb. But he's got company back there. EF Education's blowing up all over the place. And now with Brandon McNulty coming to the end of his pool, all of a sudden it's time for Adam Yates to go to work. And we're just about seven kilometers as Adam Yates throws down a vicious acceleration. Only two guys can follow him. Remco Abnapool and American Sep Kuss from Yumbo Visma. Good ride, Sepp Kuss here, trying to get some redemption along with Adam Yates, who had problems on that stage one. Now these guys are locked in. They're one, two, three guys at the front group, and it's Adam Yates throwing down. Remco Abnapul will actually get on the front and start doing some pull. And I'm thinking, whoa, this is exactly what I said yesterday on the butterfly effect. If you're Remco Abnapul, you don't want to be on the front, but... 
if you're the rivals of Remco Evnepoel, you want him on the front because that's the only way you can beat him. So Remco Evnepoel's pulling on the front. And now we're seeing the GC second and third. Lucas Plapp and Pale Bill Bow coming out the back. Pale Bill Bow knows he's got a little more extra form than Plapp at this moment. So he accelerates and he starts to drop Plapp. They catch the last two breakaway riders up front. And Hessman, he starts riding on the front there. This is a no-no, Hessman. You do not want to get on the front. I know when you're sitting at home, a lot of you fans think that, and, and the young pros think too, that when they get caught and they have a teammate in that back group, when they look back and he sees Seb Kuss, he's like, hey, if I get on the front, I should just start pulling right when they catch me. You don't want to pull Hessman at this moment unless you looked Sepp Kuss dead in the eye and Sepp Kuss said get on the front and drive it. But I didn't see that from the camera angle. Hessman gets on the front and this is a no-no because remember, at this moment, Hessman, you don't know if Sepp Kuss is comfortable at the pace that Adam Yates and Remco Abnepoel have been making up here at the front of the group or if he's just been swinging for dear life. Now, luckily for Sepp Kuss, because we're going to find out he's swinging, Hessman pulls off the front, and when he drops back, he sprays Sepp Kuss down with a little bit of water. And then the UAE team Emirates for Adam Yates, the feeder, he does an amazing job. He handles them, hands Yates a bottle and dumps water on him to cool him as Yates is on the front of the group. Now, Remco Abnepoel, he wants to be on the front of groups and make it go faster because he knows second and third is dropped. But Remco, you don't have to worry about second and third because they already got dropped, so we know your form's better. Instead, Remco gets on the front, just like I said yesterday not to do. Remco's on the front, Adam Yates is locked on, and then Sepp Kuss all of a sudden starts coming off as we look up front just a little bit past that feed zone. With that, Adam Yates gets on the front and makes the pace even faster to open up the gap to Sepp Kuss. Now behind, when we look at the chasers, there's all kinds of action happening because Bouchard has come out of nowhere. He is actually past Lucas Plapp, who's hurt and looks like the kid is suffering the whole way up this climb. And remember, it was his Enos guys that were riding on the front full gas through the flat stage to start this climb where they averaged 47 kilometers an hour when they started this last 10 kilometers to go up to the summit. So you know the whole stage was fast. And guess what? Enos helped make it fast. And now Luke Plapp is paying for that big time effort coming into this climb as we see him going off the back and Pale Bill Bow is dropping Lucas Platt. Pale Bill Bow's got some company as Sepp Kuss dropped out of the front too. Now he's coming back and there we see Pale Bill Bow will bridge up to Sepp Kuss. That means big time problems right now for Platt who's second on the general classification. Up front, after Adam Yates did a small pull, I would probably say three, 400 meters on the front, Remco Evnepoel makes a big time mistake at 4.3 kilometers to go. Remco Evnepoel gets on the front and starts pulling with Adam Yates. Again, Remco, you don't have to be pulling right now. You are in the GC lead. I understand when you look behind you, you see second and third back there. So if you have to pull, you pull soft because you got Adam Yates on your wheel. Instead, Remco's going full gas. He's going to pull for a K, a K and a half until we get to just over three kilometers to go. And then Adam Yates, when the climb is at its steepest, going up in the right bend, he's going to accelerate hard on the pedal and he's going to drop Remco Abnepoel in the red jersey. Remco, man, did you make some mistakes coming up this climb, pulling that hard and that long with Adam Yates on your wheel and pulling at 100%. How do I know he was pulling 100%? Because when Adam Yates accelerated, Remco Abnepoel didn't even change the pace at all. Now Adam Yates has got a 15 second gap immediately on Remco Abnepoel who's trying to bring him back because remember he said he wanted to win this stage and dominate the UAE Tour as it starts to flatten out with about two kilometers to go. We see Adam Yates looks back. He knows he's got this stage win in the bag if he could just keep the power steady and hold off Remco Abnepoel as the road starts to slighten up a little bit and get a little soft with two kilometers to go. Remco Abnepoel knows this is his last chance to have an advantage on Adam Yates because now it's no longer steep. So Remco Abnepoel, he goes arrow. He goes hard on the pedals and he starts nudging back some time on Adam Yates to start bringing it under 15 seconds. Then the road starts to go up again. Adam Yates is going to punch it one more time to about one kilometer to go look back over his shoulder he knows he's got the lead on Remco Abnepoel and he's gonna go soft 
basically all the way into the finish as he raises his hand in victory to win today's stage. Now, what happened behind? Remco Evnepoel did damage control. He'll come across the final corner there, going hard all the way to the line to lose about 10, 11 seconds to Adam Yates. Let's go further back down the hill because there was some action because I said Sepp Kuss had dropped off pale. Bilbao had caught Sepp Kuss. Bouchard, Bouchard had come through Lucas Plath up to those two guys, and then they had exploded. Pale Bilbao went all the way back to Lucas Plath, and then those two guys were doing damage control because up front, I told you, it was Yates up there throwing down on everyone, and he was only about a minute and 15 seconds just under that on the general classification. So those two got to work together if they want to keep a podium spot, right? Up front, Bouchard, he's holding on to Sepp Kuss's wheel. Sepp's doing one more acceleration because Sepp can move up on the general classification too. Coming into the final bend, Bouchard does a big acceleration on Sepp Kuss to round out the podium for third here on stage seven of the UAE Tour. Sepp Kuss, a few seconds behind him, will finish fourth. And then when we look further back, good thing for Platt that, that his man, Pale Bill Bell, the sitting third on the general classification, accelerated all the way to the line because Pale Bill Bell will cross the line for fifth on the stage. Platt just on his wheel. But guess what? Platt kept his second place on the general classification by one second over Adam Yates. And Pale Bill Bell lost the podium spot as Adam Yates rounded out the general classification. Remco Evna pulled first. Plap second and Adam Yates third because he celebrated at the finish to get a good picture. Otherwise, it probably could have been second, but who cares if you're second or you're third? You're on the stage, you're UAE Team Emirates, and we're in the UAE Team Emirates Tour. So you know Adam Yates is absolutely ecstatic about taking the win today. And when we look at Mario Gennetti, their director, manager there of UAE Team Emirates, he's given the big high five and hugs there to Adam Yates. So you know he's happy because UAE Team Emirates who are miserable in stage one and the team time trial have basically saved the UAE tour with two stage ones here, one rider on the general on the podium of the general classification here in the form of Adam Yates. So you know they're solid. Now let's get into the interviews afterwards because I want to talk about Adam Yates. His interview comes in all smiles. He's completely happy, super motivated. Talks about how they had nothing to lose at the beginning of this climb so they can go all in with the team train going up the climb with Mikhail Berg, with Soler and Brandon McNulty blowing up the peloton and the GC favorites to launch Adam Yates. Fantastic tactic. I would have done it the exact same way if I was Adam Yates. Now, let's look at the Rimco Ebnepool interview because he comes in. I got to believe if I'm Remco Evnipo, I'm a little devastated from this stage. You guys completely dominated all the way up until you started pulling with just about 5.8 kilometers to go. That's when everything went wrong, when you do that big monster pull for a K, K and a half with Adam Yates sitting on your wheel. Remco says he didn't expect Adam Yates to attack him early, but you had to expect it because he know he can move up on the general classification and you know you don't want to come into a sprint on Remco Evnipol's wheel because we saw that all on stage three. So you should have expected it. One other comment I got to put out. Remco Evnipol said he was alone going up the climb. You were alone because you put your teammates on the front early and they weren't comfortable with being up there. Now, I've ridden with two of the smallest teams in the world domestically with Webcore and Prime Alliance. And both times when I'm riding for those teams, the main thing you need to do, Remco Evnipol, you need to know your ability. You need to stay off the front for as much as possible. And most important, when you're really strong in the race, you need to know your teammates' ability. When I'm looking at the front from the camera angle, looking at the quick step rider Sadal, when you see those guys, you know they're on their limit. And if I can see it sitting on the Chesterfield, you got to be able to see it when you're behind your own teammates to know how they're feeling. They should have talked about it the night before that morning and should have been talking about how well they feel as they're coming into the final 10 kilometer climb here on stage seven. Every time I've been leading a general classification, whether it be small teams or big teams, I always had those conversations and always knew the ability of my domestiques on the team. So when Remco's sitting up there saying he didn't expect to be alone on the climb without teammates, you should have known what the ability was of your teammates. You should have known not to rid in the front 100% with Adam Yates on your wheel. I told you guys that on the butterfly effect yesterday. So when you're sitting up there and you lose today's stage, it wasn't because 
Adam Yates was better than you, it was because you overpulled, you did too much gas on for, for way too long of a time, and then Adam Yates jumped you, and that's why you lose. And when you look at Adam Yates, he's a super thin rider, so he's a pure climber. When you look at Remco Evnepoel, he's a bit stockier, a bit more power, so you want the climb to be a little bit less. And when you're sitting on the wheel with speed, like you had on stage three summit climb, you can be stronger and faster. But today's climb, guys, is nothing like stage three, like I already told you earlier on the butterfly effect. It was a great stage of watching the last 10 kilometers, and it did not disappoint. Remco Evnepoel to win the overall general classification, but to lose it on this last day, he's going to feel the hurt from that. Because remember, Jonas Vini goes winning. Tade Pogacar has been dominating, and Adam Yates is Tade Pogacar's domestique. So Remco Evnepoel knows he needs some work to do. In his interview, he says he's leaving here, and he's going to go up to some altitude training. And I can tell you right now, you got to be a little bit thinner because I'm pretty certain you're at least a kilo, maybe a kilo and a half heavy, which is the difference when you start getting over 6% climbs and probably lacking just a little bit of form. So once he goes to this altitude camp, we'll probably see Remco Evnepoel come out a little bit better and something more closer when we get to the Giro d'Italia of that kind of slimness and leaned out super paper thin that we saw starting the Volta Espana last year. Otherwise, he's going to be in big trouble when we get to the Giro d'Italia if you're going to have to battle against Primoz Roglic 100% on form. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. The UAE tour was fabulous. The sprinters really put on a show, and today's mountain stage was spectacular. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next edition real soon.